Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have uh, the epilogue summary video of my unboxing, uh, the great unboxing of summer 2021. Um, and yeah, I'll basically just describe what I did to each engine to repair them. I uh, noticed that a few things aren't shown. So for example, the brass uh, PRR L1S was not shown because uh, that engine still hasn't arrived yet. So, but it, it is on the way. Uh, trains did tell me that they, they made the mistake and they're gonna send it with me. They still have it. So uh, it's currently on the way, but I'm too lazy and impatient to wait for that to come. Uh, cause I already finished all the engine here. I don't, I don't want to win on one engine. Uh, so that's not shown. And then also some of the unbuilt car kits, um, I haven't shown yet. And also the uh, IHC, uh, 040, that one, I'm still in the process of trying to figure out what I'm going to do with that one. But I uh, say so that one's not shown either, but everything else should be here more or less. So let's get started. Um, first things first, this Ampli set, or not Ampli, Superliner car set here. Uh, everything here was fine. I examined every engine, every car closely. They look basically brand new. Um, nothing to do with that. Uh, over here we have the two uh, MDC Roundhouse Harryman kits. I didn't change anything. I, I built them up with according to the instructions, which I, I mean I already built two of them. But uh, uh, here's the other two that I built are new. Uh, the only thing I uh, did to that, that that I modified that was not on the instructions was I painted the weights. Uh, the, all, all the metal pieces black because I don't like rust so I uh, to prevent rust I just paint them I painted them black so like this coupler cover box is actually uh, metal and I, I just painted it black but I didn't do any other modification I didn't add an interior I didn't add metal wheels I didn't change the trucks the couplers are still cut, truck mounted I I don't think these cheap little car kits are worth you know spending that much time upgrading for now uh, I don't even model the Southern Pacific so for me these are really low value and low low priority so for now I just built them as as according to the kit instructions and uh, they work fine uh, now I have a somewhat reasonable train of four cars so yeah uh, next up we have the Intermountain or the Centralia Caboose here uh, didn't really change anything I just kind of dusted it off um, same with the uh, this car here actually this car here I uh, basically I took my original uh, New York Central uh, car uh, which had Roman lettering and then uh, Roman lettering didn't really fit my era That's the reason I was kind of hesitant building that car And so once I got the gothic lettering car I just took the sides of the car kit the new car kit and I just uh, I ripped the old Roman lettering car kit sides off um, And then I put the uh, gothic lettering car kit sides on So this is more or less the same exact car I just changed the sides added the windows and I added the handrails for the each side and uh, that's pretty much it for that car I'm pretty happy with it. And now we have the engines. So uh, first off, we have the PRR K4 here. Uh, this one I just kind of cleaned off again, just dusted it off. Uh, didn't have to disassemble it. Uh, I didn't have to disassemble it or anything like that. And it runs fine. Looks like it got disconnected between there, but oh well. Not a big deal. Uh, next up, we have the uh, brass N1S. This one I actually did end up doing a full, um, just like maintenance, I guess, kind of session. I disassembled all the wheels. I cleaned them all up. I cleaned the insides, the gear, and everything like that. Get the gearing. Uh, I degreased it all. Added some fresh grease and, and oil. Uh, the tender here. I remember. I don't know if you remember the original video, I talked about how the the wiring here is very poor. Uh, for example, the track pickups on the tender go to the engine and then back into the tender, which is just pointless. So I actually did um, upgrade everything. I just uh, basically turned this into a, a from a six pin plug to a five pin plug. And I just had the tender pickups go directly into the decoder, simplifying the wiring and um, making it just slightly more efficient. And I also uh, went through and uh, clean, used some black paint and just touched up on some spots that were uh, bare brass was showing. And I also I removed the yellow paint on the headlight, which was really annoying. The guy painted the number boards and the headlight yellow, like a bright yellow. So I just removed that. And I, I just did some cleaning. Um, they were, the drive rods were kind of dirty, so I cleaned them up, made it a little shiny. And uh, that's pretty much it. And it runs fine here. I will show you right now. See the headlight is on. Yeah, so it works fine. Um, fortunately, as I said, I'm going to sell this one uh, because that one doesn't run on my curves. 
and uh, it yeah. I mean, it's a brass two ten two. They they can they can navigate like thirty five inch radius curves or something like that. The twenty two inch definitely won't, it won't work. So, yeah. Also, I don't and, and the N one S wasn't really common in the PRR system. And I generally try to model the the everyday engines you see on the PRR. That's the reason I don't have a streamlined K four or you know like a, an S one or S two because those are just they 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 they're, they're one off engines and ultimately they they weren't really seen you know. Uh, so that's the reason I'm not going to keep that one. Uh, next up, we have the BLI F7. Um, so originally, I was going to take the BLI F7 and replace it, replace my MTH F7 here in my ABBA set of my Santa Fe. Uh, I wanted an ABBA set of Santa Fe. I figured I'd do, you know, Athern Genesis 2 and then MTH2. Uh, but the MTH ones weren't really, I mean, they're they're kind of eh. They have the glossy red which I'm not a huge fan of. They're also Phase 1 as-built, except with the horn. Um, they're as-built Phase 1, whereas the Adam Genesis are modernized Phase 2. Uh, I'll get into more in detail of that in, my, in a separate comparison video. But um, in short, this wasn't a really great... Um, it was they, they, it didn't really match well with my Genesis uh, F7s. So I figured I'd buy this to uh, replace it. And uh, it has everything. It has the works. You know, It has the marker light, the headlight, the... Um, uh, the Mars light, the number boards light up, and the cab lights up, which is really cool. Um, but the problem was, in the original, in, in the unboxing video, I was really disappointed at the at the lack of plating, the plate finish. As you can see on these engines, they have the uh, really nice plated finish. And um, the problem is, on their own, they look fine, right? They don't have the plated finish. Um, I'll take the B unit off, just for the heck of it. It's the same thing. Um, they don't have the plated finish. It's just like a paint. Um, it's kind of hard to compare, but yeah, I mean, not plated, plated. So, um, on their own, they look fine, but the problem is when you run them as an ABBA set and they're right next to each other, it's very obvious that one of them is not plated and one of them is. So, unfortunately, these will, these match even less compared to my other Genesis ones. So, uh, I'm just going to sell these. Uh, they do run fine though. They're basically brand new, so... Also, I don't like the sound system. It doesn't sound good. It has, the, the sound to me sounds drowned out. It sounds kind of, I don't know, it sounds like a low quality uh, file. It just, something about it just sounds bad that I, I don't like compared to these two. The MTH sound system is great, and then this one has Tsunami, so they sound fine. Um, so, unfortunately, I'm going to sell this, but I didn't really do anything to this. Just basically compared it with it, and I'll probably make a comparison video of all three. Um, but anyways, that's pretty much it for the DCC engines. Now we have the DC engines here. Um, this one, I, I mean, it was fine. I just, clean, I just fixed the handrails on this one. Runs amazing. Uh, this one I did a video on already. Basically, I just, um, I took the shells off. Uh, I took the shells off. I cleaned them in soapy water because they're really disgusting. Um, I also took the pilot, on, pilot off and everything like that. And then I, as far as the mechanism goes, I degreased it. So I just basically, you know, took all the wheels out, cleaned the chassis, cleaned the wheels, removed all the old grease and oil, and I added new fresh grease. I also had to replace the motor with a new motor because the the, the axle that was on the, the the gear that was on the motor axle was cracked. It was split. So um, I had to replace that. I had a spare. Um, and yeah, so now that thing runs fine. Previously did not run. This one was advertised not running, but actually ran fine. Uh, similar process with this, except I just basically, except the motor axle part. You know, I just uh, uh, de uh, took the shells off, cleaned them in soapy water. They were disgusting. Uh, and I took all the wheels out, took all the drive rods and everything like that, and then I just cleaned everything. Uh, and then added, obviously, fresh oil and grease to both of these. And then this one here... Um, I, originally, the original owner actually weathered it. They used a uh, rust weathering chalk. They didn't use any other colors. They used one color, and it was just they went overboard with it. They just used coloring chalk. Luckily, chalk kind of doesn't stick really well, or it it sticks well, but you can remove it with water, a uh, soap and water. So that's what I did. I took the shells off here. Again, very similar process. Took the shells off of the engine tender, ran them under cold water or warm soapy water, and I just cleaned it off with a toothbrush. And the, this one basically looks brand new. Um, yeah, at this point, there's very little wrong with this engine. It looks basically brand new, and it runs brand new, too. The mechanism was fine. It was very clean, so I didn't have to do anything with that. So, yeah, these three engines had the similar treatment. Take the shells off, clean it up. These two had to degrease the mechanism, just take everything apart. Uh, you know, it's kind of a pain to take, take, take all the rods off and everything like that, but it works out. And this one had uh, replaced uh, motor gear. So, yeah, that's it for those. Uh, I'll show you pictures of all three of these. Uh, between the cuts 
But uh, yeah, I'll just quickly show you the pictures of these uh, in the before phase and the after phase. Or yeah, before phase and this is the after phase. So yeah, uh, let's move on. I'm going to cut the video here and we're going to show how these four engines run. All right, and we're back. I just took the engines and I kind of just derailed them on purpose so they don't touch. They're not connected to the track power. And so this is the only engine on track and I have this handy old uh, Bachman controller. Um, yeah, so the first off here is the Pro 2000 engine. This is honestly probably the best runner on my entire uh, collection here. It runs so nice. It has huge flywheels, so it actually glides a lot. But um, yeah, let me show you how that runs. I turn the power off right now. It glides for like quite a bit. Like I can turn it off right now, and we'll glide for quite a bit. It's actually really cool. And yeah, it also has amazing slow speed control. And uh, one really cool thing is that it has actually, um, because you know Mars lights kind of predate DCC. Uh, this this engine predates DCC, so oh, I think it sort of does. So it has incandescent lights, but they managed to use a really unique incandescent bulb to simulate a Mars light. I want to show you that real quick. Sorry, that sounded, that sounded terrible. I hate doing that to engines, but uh, I just wanted to show you the Mars light. And this thing is really heavy, too. I, I, lifted off the end, the, the, I lifted it off a little bit, so hopefully the wheel wear wasn't too bad. But uh, you saw the Mars light there. It kind of like, there was actually like two bulbs inside the same like glass bulb, and it basically just flashed left and right, which is really cool. Um, you know, it was really cool technology at the time. Probably the only way to create a Mars light effect with what you had. And uh, yeah, really nice runner. Let's move on to the next engine. Next up we have this Bachman 280. Also a very, very smooth runner. Let's move on to the Southern Mountain. Alright, here's the Southern Mountain. Uh, as you know, the original owner did paint the smoke box in here with a weird gray color. It was supposed to be a silver. Um, and also actually the cylinders too. Um, it's supposed to be silver, but uh, the original owner painted it. And unfortunately, there's no way to strip that paint off without stripping the original paint off too. So uh, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Um, and yeah, let's see how it runs. The headlight works. And actually, this one's this engine's quite unique in the in the sense that Bachman actually tried to add a firebox glow into the engine, which is really cool. Now, this engine this this glow doesn't actually flash; it just stays a constant red light. But uh, I'm trying to see if I can get it running. Yeah, you can see the, the how the firebox lights up red, which is actually really cool. I'm surprised Bachman didn't do that for any other engines. It's just a red incandescent light bulb inside there. Um, but yeah, it's a really cool feature. I didn't, I didn't really know the mountains had these until uh, I, ha I tried one of these engines out. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this. Let's move on to the Hudson. All right, and last but not least, we have the Hudson here. Um, it has the upgraded mechanism. So one spotting feature you could tell is that the graphite smoke box from the factory. It implies that this is a future run of the Rivera CJ3A, uh, which is the, the original run was all black and it had the regular uh, wheels. This one has the disc drivers, and this this combination set. Uh, this engine in particular has the, a really nice upgraded can motor instead of those really chunky three-pole motors which are really loud and noisy. This one, the motor is really nice. However, it does have brass gears, so it's still noisy from gear noise. Uh, however, it runs actually very smoothly, so it doesn't have great sleep speed, uh, slow speed control either, unfortunately. But as you see, it is very smooth. The headlight does work. It's an, it's an incandes uh, incandescent bulb, excuse me. It's about a, about as slow as you can get it to go, I think, on DC at least. But yeah, I mean it, it's a bit noisier, but honestly, when you have a long train, of, a long train of cars going behind it, you really can't tell. And yeah, I mean at the, for the time, like this was made in the 1980s, 1990s. This is quite an impressive model.
I really like this drivers. I really like how they look. All right, and that is pretty much it. Uh, that's everything. Look, ignore these engines here, but everything here is uh, new. And uh, yeah, I'll be selling quite a bit of it off. Uh, some I didn't intend to buy, and I kind of want to sell it off. And other ones I just bought for a profit. Um, unfortunately, you know, trains are not free, so and I don't really have any other ways of income besides uh, my minimum wage job. So I try to, you know, find cash somewhere, so I try to sell these off. The Superliners will go, this will go, this will go. This, unfortunately, will go. I didn't really... I was going to keep it, but, um, I don't know. I have. I already have two Hudsons. I don't need, I don't need a third one. Um, that one will go, and the F7 will go, and the N1S will go. <laughs> so, all I'm keeping is the PA, the K4, the coach, obviously, these coaches, and that's pretty much it. And then the L1S whenever it comes. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.